personalities, 530 grid. Emily's going to come up and talk about DNA of life. DNA of life. Natural laws and how they're going to help us achieve our life vision. Emily! So last month I talked about going fishing with my grandfather, how he would take us little kids out in the rowboat. You know, we were all bundled up with long sleeve shirts and straw hats and given these enormous cane poles and, you know, the slimy earthworms. And we'd have to sit out there in the boat for what seemed like hours waiting for a fish to swim by and bite the hook. My grandfather saw us as profitable partners and he saw the lake as a wall of opportunity. The goal was to put food on the table. I told you last month about a few years later going fishing with my dad and we'd be in a motorboat. We'd use casting rods. We were going for bass, so bigger fish. So greater technology, but the goal was still the same. Uh, my dad was using the same natural laws, the walls of opportunity, and no problems, only opportunities. I also told you how my dad was always the best fisherman because he would just cast up along the line, the, the shore, and he'd reel it back in and he'd cast again over and over. He was very focused and very consistent, and he was always the best fisherman. I told you about my brother, the analytic, who questioned where to fish and what bait to use. I told you about my sister, the amiable, who would cast on the wrong side of the boat because she didn't want to tangle her line with others. I told you about my creative casting and then also how I like to analyze what everybody else is doing. So I told you about my personality. But you know, in the last few months, I started thinking differently. What if the goal of my grandfather wasn't just to put food on the table? What if the goal was to create memories. What if as a grandfather he knew enough about life to realize that life was changing and culture was changing so rapidly that 50 years later very few people can have that same peaceful, placid vacation in the same way we did? What if the goal of my dad was to build a team out of the disparate personalities of his kids what was his life vision? What was my grandfather's life vision? You know, little things in life that we, can, we do connect to our life vision, but we're not conscious about them, probably because we don't know what our life vision is. As I work to discover my own life vision, I'm conscious of the things that I do consistently. I love to read. I love to spend time with my sons and my family. I like uh, healthy foods, I care about the environment. Those are things that are the predictable part of my life vision. But as a business owner, what's my life vision? What am I passionate about? What, what gets me up in the morning raring to go? What buoys me through the storms? What part of real estate investing and education connect to my life vision and to the life vision of many of the people here in this audience today? Have you created your vision circle? Have you shared it with others after you shared it? What stayed the same? What changed? Oftentimes when I hear someone else describe something, my wording will change. Not necessarily my meaning, but oftentimes the, the wording. I'm working to create a life outside the predictable. I'm an adventurer <coughs> in my own life. I'm a nurturer of the people in my life. I'm a supporter of the communities that I belong to. I have a life vision that's larger than what I was raised to have, to be part of the team, to put food on the table. What's the legacy I'm leaving to my children and my unborn grandchildren beyond the properties and the physical belongings that they're going to inherit? What will they inherit? What will they say about me? What stories will be told? They'll say, she was consistent and she never gave up. I invite you to ask yourself the same questions that I'm asking myself. Am I living my life vision? Am I a good steward of my time, talent, treasure, temple, and truth? Am I focused and consistent in living my life vision? 
You know, there's a party Saturday night at Ed's in Oswego and at Elise's in Berkeley. One party, two locations. Let's get together and share our life visions. Become profitable partners. Network with a purpose. Together, what can we achieve? Can we do you conferencing the two parties together? Sure. <laughs> We'll be streaming a party. <laughs> wow. Thank you. I'll be spectacular. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we can go home now. <laughs> so, if you are listening online, and for those of you who are going to see the rebroadcast, share the whole video with people but pass that along to other people, right? Just what was just shared, right? Who couldn't benefit from that, right? Take the <coughs> video and couple it with the segment with what Emily had just shared, together, right? We talk about together, truly everyone achieves more. That's what this thing is about, helping other people achieve their life visions, right? How many groups are you part of right now? Other groups that are trying to do similar things, but of course not in exactly the same way. I want you to think about that right now. Right? Now, take those two videos, the one you just saw, and the one that will be available to you for this, all these segments are going to be in a separate video. Oh, and by the way, you've got two years worth that you can go back and review as well. All right? But take those two videos and send it to people, right? How many other people have other networking groups that they're part of? Just raise your hand, okay? All right. So would, is there anybody that would be offended by anything that was said? I hope not. <laughs> would everybody benefit from what was said? Yes. If they're listening, if they're seeing, if they're not self-deceived, if they have if they, have, if they really truly want to have a light vision. But we don't know who those people are, and it's not our responsibility to judge them. Our responsibility is to share. Right? Send it to them. Invite them next time. So.